I ruined my ex-boyfriend's life 20 plus years ago, and I just made sure it stayed ruined. <laughs> so I called the cops on my ex-boyfriend after ruining his life. Sorry this is a bit long, all names changed, throw away account for all the reasons. When I was in college in the 90s, so older than us, yeah, wow. I met Jake, then a 32 male, through mutual friends. He had already graduated and was planning to move to the opposite side of the United States for grad school, and I had already been making plans to move with friends only a 90 minute drive away from where he was moving to. We had so much in common, fell in love, and it really seemed like fate, both planning to move 3,000 miles and landing so close together. He had two sisters and a younger brother who were all awesome people, and I became instant friends with them as well. Because he was in school and I was working, I would usually go to him to hang out on weekends. He was renting a house with two roommates also in his program. We were young, so money was tight, but we had fun, went for taco dates, and spent a lot of time at his house where he was breeding and selling small animals. Whoa, whoa, whoa what? <laughs> Strange little twist, but... Also kind of vague. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what kind of animals? Pigeons. <laughs> Jake was an animal sciences PhD student, so being around animals was normal and I loved it. I met and became friends with his advisor's wife, Mary, female, mid-50s, who worked in administration at the university. She was a lovely woman, and I would often have lunch with her when I went over on weekends. Jake was a teaching assistant, TA, and I met other people in the program and made friends with them faster than he did. After about two years of dating, I was at the house one day laying in bed together in a state of some undress, and he said out of the blue he was concerned I'd been gaining weight, and it made it harder for him to be attracted to me. No concern about my health, it was all about him finding me unattractive. I sat up and said, well then, maybe you should make sure there's better food for me to eat than crackers and cheese when I come up on weekends. Even at 23, I didn't take that kind of BS. I had gained maybe 10 pounds since meeting him two years earlier, and I still wore the same size clothes, about a US size 6 to 8. I wasn't going to engage in a fight about it after all, it was his problem, not mine. So I asked him calmly, so what is your solution to this? He stared at me blankly and said, well, I guess that you should try to lose weight. And I said, nah, I'm not going to do that, so what are you going to do about it? He said, well, I guess nothing. I wanted to let you know how I feel. And I said, cool, thank you. Put my clothes back on and went to sleep and drove home the next day as usual. We kept dating and about three months later he called me and said he wanted to break up after close to three years. The reason? And I quote, you don't know enough about science. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. What is the mitochondria the powerhouse of? Idiot. <laughs> I can never love you. Oh, wow. You don't even know about evolution. If you don't name five zooplankton right now, this is over. He felt like he couldn't have a conversation with me about his work where he didn't have to use common names for animals instead of scientific <laughs> ones. You won't even let me speak Latin at you. Whoa. I said, well, that's BS. What's the real reason? He said it was the real reason. He came to see me a month later to return something of mine and I confronted him demanding the real reason. He finally admitted he had been seeing one of his undergrad students, let's call her Meg, a 19 year old. He was then 26 and her teacher. I screamed at him to leave, my roommate threatened to throw him off our second floor balcony if he didn't go, and he left. It hit me all at once after he walked out and I went from rage to stunned laughter. I'd met Meg a few times and at one point she was at his house for a barbecue and spilled something all over his pants. Jake asked me if I could lend her some sweats. I couldn't because I was a size 8 and she was a size 18. Nothing wrong with that at all, but the point is, I realized he made those comments about my weight to try and get me to break up with him because he was a coward. He clearly likes a big gal. Although when he said those things to me about my weight, 
It was 1 a.m., I lived about 95 miles away, and we had just had intercourse, so I don't know how he thought this would go. Even <laughs> in hindsight, it perplexes me. Yeah. Did he think I was going to break up with him and storm off into the night and drive an hour and a half? <laughs> anyway. I emailed his roommates. It was early 2000s. It's how you communicated anything you didn't want to say on the phone. I wanted to let him know we'd broken up and that they were always lovely to me and thanked them for being friends. They both admitted they knew about Meg and were the ones to demand that Jake tell me or they would. That's when he broke up with me with the lame, you don't understand science excuse. One of his roommates, a super nice, super cute guy named George, offered to help me get a few things still at their house that he had collected for me anyway from around the house. He suggested I come up for the weekend, we go out and drink and have a good time, all the things Jake didn't want to waste money on, and I said sure. So I went up and George let me into the house while Jake was gone. I took photos of all his animals because while I might not be a PhD student, I paid attention and knew he had an endangered species in his care. He wasn't breeding it. It was an unreleasable animal he had taken in from a rescue organization. There was paperwork he had to submit with a $25 fee and he refused to do it, saying he didn't want the government in his business. I took photos of that animal, all his breeding conditions, and a photo of an animal not allowed in the state, which was in a tank right next to a window and visible from outside. I then went out for a night on the town with George. We stumbled in early around midnight so Jake and Meg, who were watching TV, would see me in a short dress, drunk, and George practically carrying me. I spent the night in George's room. He was a total gentleman, but made sure to leave the room and parade past them in his boxers a few times, <laughs> and we giggled and moaned loudly so they could hear us. When I went to leave the next morning, Jake said I didn't have to act like a W in front of him as I ate a donut slowly in my rumpled dress with messy hair while George beamed at me and then planted a kiss on my forehead. Meg looked ashamed, not quite knowing where to look, and I said, have fun with my leftovers, and walked out. I wanted to think the pretty loud hookup and a few juvenile insults was my revenge. It was not. The next day, I had my photos developed. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> and called the state officer of Fish and Wildlife. I reported the animals in the house, the potential overcrowding of breeding animals, and the two animals he shouldn't legally have at all in the state, and asked them how to make a report. Turns out Jake wasn't well liked by his peers in his program or by his roommates, but I was. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it doesn't surprise me Jake wasn't well liked. He seems like a goober. Yeah, big time. Uh, George had suggested that he and their other roommate could submit complaints to the university that a TA was sleeping with one of his students and showing her favoritism. The night we went out at the bars, we made sure to tell the story to anyone who they knew. They made sure all the women in his classes knew he was sleeping with Meg. It wasn't a large program, so people knew fast he had cheated and was now dating his student. George and the other roommates made sure people knew they had put in complaints sick of Jake's entitled BS. With my full statement made and photos sent to the state wildlife officials, I called my friend Mary, Jake's advisor's wife. She knew about the breakup and lame reason, and I let her know he admitted he was sleeping with a student. I'd been emailing with him, and he admitted it in writing, so I sent that to Mary. Mm. To say she was not happy about that was an understatement. She said she made sure it would be investigated and told her husband, Jake's direct advisor, while I was on the phone with her. I love how this is all shaping up. This is the kind of revenge I'm... This one's cool. I'm pretty down with. Yeah. Speaking of investigations, a few weeks later, George called me giddy to say state fish and wildlife officials were there <laughs> confiscating animals. <laughs> he told them he would be happy to tell them whatever they needed to know. Meg was there when it happened and told the officials as far as she knew all the animals belonged to her boyfriend Jake and that they were all legal. That put George and the other roommates in the clear. One animal was kept in the backyard, so it was implied to Jake that a neighbor reported it. While they were there to investigate, they knew to look in the back window to see the far more problematic, illegal to have in the state under any circumstances animal. 
Since George was on the lease, he was able to let them in to investigate the house. The animals were all in communal areas, and the officers stayed there for a few hours and returned with a warrant to take all the animals and enter Jake's room to investigate. George and the other roommate let them into their room with no issues and were quickly cleared. Meg apparently couldn't get a hold of Jake and eventually drove to the university to find him. Remember, no cell phones yet. <laughs> it was a good day. The only animals they left were some guppies in a fish tank. Now, PhD students need grant money to do research, and a large part of animal studies funding comes from the federal government. <laughs> Jake had just gotten an EPA grant right around when he broke up with me, so I called the EPA and asked how I would report that a person with a federal grant was being investigated for illegally harboring endangered animals. Long story short, he lost his EPA grant and had to make restitution on what had already been used, close to $30,000. That's $30,000 in late 90s money, folks. That's a lot of money. Also, it, it sounds like she did know quite a bit about science, actually. Mm -hmm. He would never be able to get another federal grant. He avoided jail time on the state charges since all the animals were in good health, but lost all his breeding animals, worth thousands of dollars, since they were collected for safekeeping during the investigation when the two illegal animals were taken. In the end, he owed a $15,000 fine and the two animals went to a nearby nature center. For years, I would stop by if I was in the area to visit them. Huh. The university revoked his scholarship and fired him from teaching for having an inappropriate relationship with a student. He somehow escaped being expelled, but it always shocked me that he never tried to hide the relationship with Meg and was so stupidly self-assured he didn't wait the four weeks until she would have been done with his class to start publicly <laughs> dating her. Yeah. <laughs> she might not know science, but Jake doesn't know anything else. <laughs> he knows nothing. By the university rules, he would have been in the clear to date her, not being her teacher anymore, and she would just have to avoid any classes he was a TA in. It never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> after a few months, I emailed his sisters and told them I missed them because Jake broke up with me after trying to call me fat and cheating on me, and I felt weird contacting them. The girls told me he told the family I broke up with him because of the distance. I forwarded them emails that Jake wrote after the breakup, talking about how he fell for Meg and he was sorry about it, but it was true. I couldn't keep up with him academically and it made him attracted to Meg. Jake managed to convince his dad to pay for one more year of school so he could get a master's degree instead of a PhD. And while I stayed in contact with his sisters and brother via email and then social media, I largely let it all go. I got even, made some friends. Mary became like an auntie to me and I went on with life. I went on to get a master's degree myself and my specialty, helping scientists and doctors communicate their work to lay people. You know, us dummies who can't remember all the scientific names. That's such a slam dunk. That's so good. <laughs> I swear it happened by accident. Not by design, but I love it and I work with everyone from small town doctors and nurses to pharmaceutical companies to museums to state and federal governments to film and TV producers. I travel a lot and speak and get to learn a lot of cool things about our planet and how things work. I knew through his siblings that Jake and Meg got married and had two kids. Oh. Meg dropped out of the sciences and became an accountant. Jake went back to breeding animals. Every once in a while, his sisters or brother would tell me something over lunch or via text, but we had our own relationship that existed outside of him. Apparently, when I sent a wedding gift for one of his sisters, he loudly complained at a co-ed bridal shower that all of his siblings were still friends and didn't make an effort to embrace his now wife, Meg. Apparently, the sister just laughed and said, I don't make it a habit to be friends with homewreckers. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Jake's parents found out how their relationship started and ours ended, 10 years after we broke up. Jake never found out I was behind reporting him to the state, and in the end, I didn't lie about a single thing, except maybe exaggerating a drunken makeout session with George, who's now a successful and tenured professor with a lovely wife and daughters. Fast forward about 20 years to a few weeks ago. I was at a university giving a lecture to a room of 250 undergrad and grad students. In the end, I was mingling with the student afterward and heard a voice say, Hey LP, long time no see. And I realize it's Jake. And I didn't change the expression on my face at all. I was completely <laughs> shocked and my instinct was to play dumb. So I said, I'm sorry, uh, help me out. H have we met? <laughs> uh, uh, maybe at another workshop or lecture? 
He looked incredulous and said, it's me, Jake. And I said, I can't place you, but I'd love to figure it out. Finally, I gasped and said, oh my goodness, Jake, I guess I just blocked you out. And said, well, lovely to see you. And moved on quickly when he tried to reach out and hug me. I was happy to leave it there with the satisfaction of him seeing me as a guest lecturer in a science department of a major university when he was just in the audience. The department chair and faculty who had invited me out to dinner, and while there, one of them said, So you know Jake? I love where this is going. I said, I did from over 20 years ago, being vague about how. She went on to tell me he had been there for an interview for a teaching position and had spent a few days there observing <laughs> and they were likely going to hire him. I couldn't control it. I scoffed. When they all looked at me, I said, I'm sorry, I'm just shocked he's teaching after what happened at University X. They said, what happened? And I said, well, he was sleeping with a 19-year-old student when he was 26 and he had to leave the program without a PhD because he couldn't afford to stay after losing his scholarship. The three people I was with all looked at each other like they knew they had a problem and said, wow, we'll have to look into that and then they changed the subject. <laughs> My old friend Mary, retired a year or two now but still friendly with her old colleagues, called me this weekend to say a friend at the university let her know someone had called doing a background check about Jake and they pulled his file, which included being fired, leaving the program with a lower degree, and the complaint letters from over 20 years ago about his conduct. Mary's name had been on it with her husband listed as the faculty advisor, so she thought she'd like to know. As a bonus, <laughs> it had a copy of his arrest record for the illegal animals. I guess his dad had paid for a decent lawyer to get the records expunged after the charges were reduced, and he paid the fines, so it doesn't show up on a standard background check. I don't think he's going to get that job. So, I will return to my life, content that the universe comes through sometimes, especially if you give it a little nudge now and then. The best revenge is when you don't have to do anything wrong, you just have to help direct knowledge to the right places. If there's anything I can impart to any young women and men reading this, as a shimmy happily into my now size 10 pants, it's that if someone who is supposed to love you complains about your waiter looks, that's their problem to fix mentally, not yours. And maybe it's time to check out what they're doing behind your back or simply move on. Remember though, it's their flaw, not yours. If Jake hadn't been a coward and tried to make me break up with him or just ended things with me in a mature way, I might not have found out about Meg and turned his own wickedness back on himself. Yeah. We love a feel-good story. I feel great! <laughs> this is magic! It's perfect! I, I will say it is excruciating to not know what the illegal animals were. I mean, there's something in tanks. I'm guessing some form of reptile or something like it's that. It's gotta be a reptile. Probably. Yeah. Jake seems... Yeah. You know, I don't want to say Jake seems like a reptile man because I love reptiles too. And <laughs> I'm no Jake, I hope. <laughs> and I hope none of you are either. Don't be a Jake! <laughs> And certainly don't be less than Jake. Oh, God. <laughs> be better than Jake. Put in some effort. It is incredible that he could have solved all of these problems by waiting four weeks and paying $25. So simple. Just wait. It's not that hard to be like, oh, you know what? We're really not supposed to be dating right now. But I, th I think that uh, for a scientist, uh, Jake wasn't thinking with his brain. <laughs> The, the animal thing, though, too, like the small, like, fee he would have had to pay, like, yeah, it would have solved that completely. $25. I got that right, right? Yeah. $25. A $25 registration fee. I don't want the government in my business either, but, like, for $25, yeah, okay. Yeah, you pay $25 to keep them out of your business. Yeah. Like... You do the required bit with the government, be like, please leave me alone. And they go, okay. But for you to go, I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> the government's going to go, well, then we're going to get into your business. It's not great, but it's a reality. It's so funny to me how easily he could have avoided all of this. Yeah. And she was not maliciously seeking a bunch of stuff out. She, as you said... She just directed evidence and information to people who should know. And you can say, like, oh, she definitely wanted to get him in trouble. Yeah, but he was doing crappy things. And her yeah. just letting the proper people know, like, she didn't even tell his parents about it. Yeah. They didn't know for 10 years. Yeah, it's very mild. Like, 
That's great. Do yeah. do it that way. That's now that's some good revenge. Good revenge. Mwah. Delicious. That's a delicious revenge of spaghetti. Mwah. And twenty years. That revenge has definitely gone cold, which I hear is the best way to serve it. I mean, maybe he has turned stuff around. Maybe he's a nicer person. I don't know. But eh, you made some ripples back in the day, and I guess yeah. they're still going. So <laughs> deal with it, dork. He didn't, he didn't change much. He married the girl, and he kept breeding animals. So I feel like it's a safe bet that he changed nothing. Yeah. I mean, maybe he got better. I don't want to hold too much against him, but sure. I feel like... Even still, I can't blame her, the, our OP, for that. I think it's all just fine. All she did was share true information with some people. And not everyone. Didn't email it to everyone yeah. with pictures of his butthole or anything like that. That's bad revenge. Do good revenge. That makes people lose out on job opportunities and uh, affects the rest of their life. Yeah. And they lose their endangered reptiles.